Rubin from East West Healing Performance. Today I want to do a quick clip on cardio. It's a large topic. I get tons of emails, tons of questions, stuff from the blog, the YouTube. Just want to give you some quick insight into cardio and what we do with our clients here. This is a large topic. You're going to read one person that says do cardio and another one that says don't. Well, there's too many factors that are involved when you're doing cardio with people. First of all, you have to look at the person. People say, well, cardio is good for me and cardio is, sorry, not good for the other person. Well, it really depends on the person and the, and the state they're in physiologically, hormonally, and on and on, physically, things like that. First off, if you look at our society, people are running around and always doing, 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 never being, 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 right? As some of the um, spiritual mystics say, we're not human doings, we're human beings. So people are eating, you know, conventional refined foods with a lot of additives and preservatives in it. They're overworking, they're overtraining. Everything we do is, is to the umph degree, you know. Um, we like to do the more is better principle. Well, here we at East West Healing, we teach the less is more principle. People are running around in a catabolic state. They're always on, under some sort of sympathetic stress from electromagnetic frequencies, from different chemicals, from poor nutrition, from you know poor posture, mental emotional stress, on and on and on. Well, if you don't adapt to these over time, these break you down. Okay, you become catabolic. And if you look at people in our society, we have almost every disease out there is an itis, which is inflammation. It's a sign of too much. And then the itis eventually turns into an osis, which is basically burnout, okay? And some of the most common things people come in with is some type of gastrointestinal disorder, right? IBS, things like that, as well as arthritis, osteoarthritis. We see that all the time. Um, so it, it's very common. Well, most people, if you look at how people work out, they think that doing cardio is the best thing for them. It's going to burn calories. They're going to lose weight. But then they leave the gym, they smoke a cigarette, and they eat like shit. So it doesn't really balance out, you know. You're just always teeter-tottering, okay. So first off, we always stress this, proper nutrition, organic diet, eating for your metabolic type, eating foods that are living, okay. There's so many more principles that I could go over that can help, but the bottom line is when it comes to cardio, okay, and there's a lot of research to support this, what we do with our clients, because most people coming in, we like to teach them the less is more principle, okay. We don't do cardio with our clients. We actually have a treadmill. The only reason we have it is because the client gave it to us. Okay, We're not big fans of cardio. But you have to understand that here at East West Healing, we do more rehabilitation from the inside out. We're not here to teach someone to have them increase their you know, um, 800 meter or whatever, 40 meter sprint. That's not what we do. Okay, we don't do sports-specific training. We rehab injured athletes, but once they get to the training phase, we refer them out. Now, when it comes to cardio, what we typically do is we like to train more anaerobically, whether it's, this all depends on the person, if they have a hormone imbalance, what's going on physiologically, biochemically, and physically. But to generalize, we like to do anaerobic workouts with that client, okay? More anaerobic meaning um, a shorter amount of time. They're going to be doing um, shorter bouts of workouts, kind of like a circuit, okay? Um, and the intensity is, is a huge factor. But it's a circuit with longer rests, and they get a shorter workout, typically 30 to 45 minutes tops. Okay, These are with our really catabolic clients. At the same time, if we do cardio, we have a lot of clients do sprints or what we call burst training. So again, that influx of hormones, and then they do a complete rest for a minute. So I'm going to have them do a minute sprint. This is for the you know um, really skilled client. And then a minute to two minute complete rest. We do that four times. With someone starting out, we might do a, a 15 to 30 second sprint. And then we might do a minute rest, complete rest. We do that four times. We have them do that three to five times a week, um, depending on the client, of course. At the same time, jump roping. Jump, ro jump roping is like burst training. It's very anaerobic, okay? Meaning you're not doing cardio for 45 minutes, which that's aerobic, okay? The reason we do that is because, A, people in our catabolic state. We don't want to release more catabolic hormones. We actually want to release growth hormones and hormones that build the body up that are, that are anabolic. Everyone wants to be anabolic. No one wants to be catabolic. So this research done by Marx in 2001, and what he did was examine college-age women. And, of course, we don't know what was going on with these women, how they're eating, if they had hormone imbalances. You know, there's all these studies, but there's so many factors, in my opinion, that are overlooked. But we'll just take it for what it's worth at this point. And he did a six-month training program with these college-age women. He did some um, high-volume, which is like a high-intensity strength workout, okay, high-volume 
high intensity strength, and then a low volume circuit, meaning a lower weights in circuits. Okay, <clears throat> and he found that the sub the subjects or the women that did the low volume, okay, actually released some growth hormone, but more cortisol response, and the women that did the higher volume, higher intensity um, strength workouts actually released um, more growth hormones and testosterone and anabolic hormones. Now you can switch that and you can still do uh, with the right person a circuit and make it high volume. Okay, this is where you know program design, sorry it's my phone, program design and understanding the science of it comes into play but we can simplify it and say that it's someone that does higher intensity, higher volume um, and it didn't really matter on the sets, workout with more weight, working more multi-joint um, doing more multi-joint movements and working larger muscles actually um, release more growth hormones and anabolic hormones versus the people that just did circuits with light weight, kind of like trainers train their clients, try to kick their ass. They didn't get much of a hormone response. They actually got more of a cortisol response, which is a catabolic hormone. So what we typically do with people is, A, we look at the client. Do they need a high volume, or low volume? Do they need a circuit? Do they need strength training? Of course, this depends on the person, but we like to manipulate their workout, A, to make it anaerobic, okay, so we get more of a, a burst of growth hormones, then we give them rest, and they have that sense of it's a high density, it's a hard workout, so they can't work out for longer than 30 to 40, 45 minutes tops, okay, some of our clients are workouts at 20, 30 minutes, we get a nice growth hormone response, okay. The same time we decide whether we want to do um, a, a high intensity or low intensity, intensity meaning weight. Typically, we like to push it in the middle if we're doing a low volume to get that anabolic response, okay? And then we decide if, if how many sets we're doing, okay? Meaning volume, high volume, low volume. Typically, in, in the research Mark showed in 2001 that it didn't really matter on the sets, um, but the more sets you did, okay, the less growth, growth hormone response you got, okay? What do people do? They go into the gym, they do circuits, they do more and more and more, they work out for an hour, and then they do 30 to 45 to an hour of cardio. So you're in a catabolic state, you do a hop on the cardio machine, you do an anaerobic workout, and now you're in a more of a catabolic state. So most of our clients don't work out longer than 30 to 60 minutes. That's hands down. Um, they don't need to. If they do a workout, it's 30 to 45 minutes, and we want to incorporate some burst training. Like I said, we incorporate the jump rope, and we incorporate the treadmill to do sprints, or they can do sprints outside. And of course, this is right with the right person, that is maybe biochemically balanced and doesn't have a hormone imbalance, okay? But at the same time, if you do have a hormone imbalance, a great way to fight this is, for example, if I travel, a lot of times I'm too tired when I travel because I'm speaking for eight hours and I don't feel like working out. What I'll do is I'll just run down to the gym, I'll pick one exercise, typically a squat curl press with dumbbells because it's multi-joint and working all my big muscles, and I'll do probably three to five sets of like a moderate weight for me, um, and I'll do circuits, so I'll do, do you know, basically that one exercise, so I'll do it three, five sets. Then I hop in the treadmill and do four 30-minute sprints with a minute rest in between. So my workout's about 15, 20 minutes. I get a great anabolic response because I've been catabolic all day from being on my feet and being tired and talking. And I get that great anabolic response. I'm in and out of the gym. I'm not in there forever and breaking down my body, okay? So there's some quick tips for you. Hope, hopefully you've learned something. You can do more research into this on your own. It's a pretty large topic and touchy subject, but hopefully you learned something. If you want to learn more about our company, please visit our website at eastwesthealing.com or our blog. Feel free to email us with any insights, questions, or concerns. Thanks, and have a great day.